Hi everyone and welcome to Art Spot Online, the online version of the free weekly drop-in art making program at the Tampa Museum of Art, where we learn about something on view and make something inspired by it. Today we're going to learn about the work of C. Paul Genowine and make an art deco relief sculpture inspired by it. Sculptor C. Paul Genowine was an artist who made small bronze sculptures, major architectural projects, and everything in between. His artwork was influenced by the art of the ancient world, but he also engaged with the new sculptural styles of his time, merging the new art deco style with the pre-existing neoclassical tradition. Neoclassical sculpture and architecture looked back to the art of ancient Greece and Rome and was about trying to connect the new American government of the you know late 1700s to the ancient governments of Greece and Rome which the United States wanted to identify with and take inspiration from. Think carved white marble sculptures and white marble buildings with columns in the front. Many of the original government buildings in the United States were designed in the neoclassical style and still are to this day, some of them at least. If the neoclassical style was associated with the government, the art deco style was associated more with modern industry. It's all about the sleek new machines and industrial materials of the early 1900s, and it used smooth and clean geometric designs to describe mechanical as well as organic forms. Art Deco images, sculptures, and buildings look machine-like. You know, they look streamlined and powerful. While starting in a neoclassical style, he combined that artistic style with the latest developments in art in this more, you know, futuristic Art Deco style. You can see Genoine sculptures as part of lots of different major works of architecture in the United States, including the Philadelphia Museum of Art, Rockefeller Center, and the Brooklyn Central Library. He also did a major project for the 1939 World's Fair. The World's Fair was this regular event back in the day where countries from all over the world would gather, they would set up pavilions um, that celebrated their art, their culture, and the newest technology you know, from their country. The theme for 1939 was the world of tomorrow. Over 1,200 acres in Corona Park, Queens was designated for that World's Fair with pavilions and exhibition spaces constructed to highlight inventions, innovations, and architecture that was all about creating a, a futuristic utopia rooted in democracy and the convenience of technology. The World's Fair also showcased the most important visual artists of the day and included several significant sculptures by Genoine, including a new project that he made specifically for the World's Fair. Electricity and advances in technology were a major theme of the expo, uh, so he was asked to make sculptures to decorate these four 65-foot tall lit-up pylons. Pylons are the tall towers that are used to carry power lines high above the ground. So he was asked to make sculptures to decorate four of these things, each one representing the four elements, air, fire, earth, and water. And he created relief sculptures for each column to represent each element. So for the air column, there were things like a dragon and birds and a wheel with wings. For the fire one, you had a serpent and a lightning bolt. For the earth, he used things related mostly to the harvest. So things like grapes, a donkey, wheat, and a beehive. And for the water pylon, he used things like seahorses, an octopus, the Greek god Poseidon, and fish. So all the sculptures that Genuine made for those pylons are relief sculptures, meaning that they're sculptures that protrude out from a background. The images that you see on coins are an everyday example of a relief sculpture. And relief sculptures are one of the two major sculpture types that there are. Um, there are relief sculptures and then there are also sculptures in the round. So sculptures that are in the round are fully finished on all sides. You're meant to walk all the way around them and view them from all the different angles. And relief sculptures, you mainly see them from one angle, right? They're projecting out from a background. So today, we're gonna make a genuine inspired relief sculpture out of some basic stuff, just cardboard and glue. Um, and then we're gonna paint it so that it looks like it's carved from stone. So for supplies, we're just gonna need a pencil, some scrap pieces of cardboard, a utility knife, some glue and some paint. You just need white and black. So start by sketching your drawing on your piece of cardboard. 
When you're planning it out, make sure you have some stuff that's really far away in the background, some stuff that's kind of far away, and some stuff that's really close to you. Um, if you draw something bigger, it'll look closer. If you draw something smaller, it'll look farther away. And don't worry about the details. Just focus on drawing the major shapes that make up each thing that you're drawing. And if you want to try for a more kind of an art deco style, use smooth curving lines, sharp angles, and simplify detailed shapes into simpler, more geometric shapes. So trace your outlines with black marker. This will also help you to keep the drawing, you know, simple and clean. And it'll also help you to trace your drawing onto a piece of paper. So after you trace your outlines with black marker, trace that drawing onto a piece of paper and then cut out the shapes that you drew on the paper, almost as if you were going to turn your drawing into a puzzle. Keep in mind that the shapes of the things that are the farthest away, you actually don't need to save those. We'll just use the background on the drawing that we did on cardboard for those parts. But now that we have this kind of puzzle of these shapes, we're gonna trace them on another piece of cardboard. For the shapes that are in the far distance and the middle distance, add a little bit of extra length to the bottom of the shape so that the closer layers can overlap it. This will make more sense when we start actually doing it. But again, the shapes of the things that are far away and kind of in the middle distance, add a little bit of extra length to the bottom of them. So now once you've drawn all of these on a piece of cardboard, we're gonna cut them out. So once we've cut all of these out, starting with the areas that are farthest away, we're just gonna start to glue them onto our original sketch that we made on our piece of cardboard. And then as we add more and more layers of these objects that are getting closer and closer to us, to make it protrude farther out from the background so that it's literally closer to us, we're gonna add little extra scrap pieces of cardboard so that they stand up a little bit higher than the stuff that's farther away. And here you can see we added that little bit of extra length so that our closer layers overlap the layers that are behind them. It'll seem a little bit wonky at first, but the more that you do, the cooler and cooler it looks. And the last step is to just paint it the color of stone. So I'm mixing white with a tiny, tiny bit of black to create a light gray concrete color. And I'm not fully mixing it. I wanna let those little streaks of dark gray kind of exist so that it looks almost like marble. All right, well, that's Art Spot for this week. Thank you for learning and making with the Tampa Museum of Art. If you liked this video, make sure you click the thumbs up and subscribe so that you don't miss any future episodes. And I'll see you next time.